simplifying, dividing, and simplifying. Let's begin with rational expressions and functions and a definition of a rational expression. An expression that consists of the quotient of two polynomials where the polynomials in the denominator is non-zero is called a rational expression. So really, think of it as a fraction, but a fraction with polynomials, such as a fraction like 8 over 7, or a over b, or 8 over y plus 5, or y squared plus 7x minus 4 divided by x cubed minus y cubed. They're all rational expressions. Now recall from last section 4.8. We talked about when a rational expression is undefined. Well, it's undefined where I have a situation where I have a zero in the denominator. That's a big problem. It makes my function undefined. So example one, find all numbers for which the rational expression x squared plus 3 divided by x squared minus 3x minus 28 is undefined. So recall from last section, we want to take our denominator and set it equal to 0 and solve. 3x minus 28. Multiply to give me negative 28, but add to give me negative 3. <coughs> well, I can get 28 from 4 and 7. And if I make the 7 a 3, when I add them, I get negative 3. So we have an x squared. This factors to be x minus 7 and x plus 4. Okay, let's set each one of the factors equal to 0. x minus 7 is equal to 0 and x plus 4 is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and solve. So if we add 7, we add 7, we get x is equal to 7. We subtract 4, subtract 4, x is negative 4. And so our function will be undefined, where x is equal to those numbers. So we do not want x to be those numbers. So x cannot be negative 4 and 7, because otherwise it would be undefined. Definition, multiply rational expressions. To multiply rational exp expressions, multiply numerators and multiply denominators. So that means we have to multiply A times C and B times, and C times D. This should have been a B, and <laughs> B times D. So we multiply fractions, we multiply across. Now, as you're working with these problems, I'd like to remind you what a special, a special one is. So one, and I'm dividing something by itself, right? If I have the same thing in the top and the bottom, then my answer is one. Like two divided by two is one, x divided by x is one, and so is x squared plus 2 divided by x squared plus 2. That's also equal to 1. This is a very helpful trick throughout the course of this chapter. Remind ourselves what 1 is. It can be created by something divided by itself. So let's see here. We have example 2. We're asked to simplify 9x squared divided by 36x. Okay, well, I want to simplify, and if I have the same thing divided by itself, then it's 1. So can I write this as something divided by itself? Is 3 times 3, and x squared is x times x. In the bottom, we have 36, which is 
3 times 3 times 4. And we have an x. Now, the reason why I didn't simplify the for any before any further is because we see 3 divided by 3 is 1, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and x divided by x is 1. So we're left with x over 4. And you'll, you probably may think like, oh, I could have seen that. 36 and 9 divide each other. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 36 divided by 9 is 4. I get my 1 and my 4. And my x squared divided by x is just x. So you could have achieved that without breaking it down as much. In example three, we're going to simplify polynomials. So when you're simplifying polynomials, or when you hope to simplify, your biggest hint is to factor completely. That we can see when you have something divided by itself. So in this first problem, Let's go ahead and start off by factoring the numerator. So I see they have a 3 in common. If I divide out a 3, I'm left with x. And then 12 divided by 3 is 4. In my denominator, I can divide out a 5. I'm left with x minus 4. We see how x minus 4 and x minus 4 make 1. So that we're just left with 3 over 5. Okay, let's do this next problem. I want to fully factor. In my numerator, I see I can factor out a 4 and an a. Because 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 28 divided by 4 is 7. And if I do so, I'm left with 2a plus In the denominator, I can divide out a 4 and an a as well. So then I'm left with a plus 3. And here we see that 4a and 4 divide to make 1. So then we're just left with 2a plus 7 and a plus 3. Next, what is canceling? Canceling is a shortcut often used for removing a factor equal to 1. When working with fractions, canceling removes factors equal to 1 products. It cannot be done in sums or adding expression or when adding expressions together. So when we divide it to make 1 ab above here, that's what it's referring to as canceling. Now, when I went to school, I had a teacher who did not like the word canceling. She said they divided to make one. If you like to say canceling, that's okay, as long as you're doing it properly. What do I mean by properly? So, you've been warned, this is not canceling. You can't just do the number on the top and the bottom and cancel. Because, you, because they have that plus, it has them united. I always think of them as, you know, they're married, they're together, you can't break them up. So if they, if they have a plus or a minus in between, you can't break it up. You can't just divide out something. It needs to be a factor of it. You need to be able to divide it out. So take a look here. We're asked to simplify x minus 3 and 6 minus 2x. Well, often when we see these questions, I always think, okay, I don't know where to start. But I know my guiding rule is to first factor completely. completely. Okay, so let's try a factor. In my numerator, I see that I can't do anything with that x minus 3. But in my denominator, I can divide out a 2. 
If I divide out a 2, I'm left with 3 minus x. And, hmm, I see these numbers, and they look almost the same, but not quite, right? The order is different. Order matters with subtraction and division. It doesn't matter with addition and multiplication. So how can I rewrite this to my benefit? Well, in your denominator, you can go ahead and factor a negative 1. That's a very helpful trick. If we do so, we're left with, we have x minus 3. And I factor out 2, and I'm going to factor out a negative. So I'll write it in the beginning. All right. So factoring negative 1, it changes the signs. So if I had, think of it as dividing by negative 1. So if I had a positive 3, it's now going to be a negative 3. And if I had a positive x, it's now going to be a negative x, it's now going to be positive. So now I've reached the order that we want. So now I can cancel that x minus 3. Now, in the numerator, it's not gone. We still have a 1. If I can jump to the end for a moment, what we just did is the opposites in rational expressions. Expressions of the form a minus b and b minus a are opposites or additive inverses of each other. When either of these binomials is multiplied by a negative one, the result is an other binomial. So for example, like we just see here, these numbers look almost the same to where we can cancel them, but they're not. I can reach what we want if I x plus or x minus 8. So here we had a positive 8. Here we have x. Now notice here my x is positive. And here it causes a sign change for each term separately. And in my numerator, I have x minus 8. So now I'm able to cancel that quantity. That's a very helpful trick. OK, let's continue with example 5. OK, we want to multiply and simplify. Well, this problem looks so Let's start off by first factoring completely. Okay, in my new I have here I have twenty one three times negative four negative twelve negative three. So this factor is to be 3x squared minus 12x minus plus 3x is the placeholder of 1.
Okay, great. Now, according to what we learned, to multiply polynomials or to multiply fractions, we just multiply across. So let's go ahead and do that. plus 5 times x minus 4 divide to make a special one. And 7 divides 21, right? So 7 divided by 7 is 1, 21 divided by 7 is 3. I especially like it when I have a lot of canceling happening. Next question. I think I wrote that here. So to divide fractions, you need to um, have A divided by B divided by C divided by D. You and you want to flip your second fraction. It's technically called a reciprocal. And then you're able to multiply across. Now, the way my husband likes, his, likes to say it so that his students remember, is take a fraction, you change it, you flip your second fraction. So he actually says keep and flip. And you can use that to help you remember as well. Keep changing. Okay, so let's rewrite it. We have x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 16 times x squared minus 6x minus 7 divided by 3. On the numerator, I now have x squared plus 2x minus 8 divided by x squared minus 6x minus 7. There we go. Okay, now to finish things off, let's go ahead and factor completely. Okay, here we have differences of squares, so that factors to be x minus 4, x plus 4. This one, you want to think what number is multiplied negative 8, that to be 2, 4, and 2 work. We want to get a positive 2, so that factors to be x plus 3. So that factors to be x plus 3. We, I kind of was messy, and I'm very sorry. So in my numerator, I have x plus 1 to be numerator factor to be, we have x plus 4, x minus 2.
Okay, let's cancel out. This is my favorite part. So I see uh, x plus 4 and x plus 4. And x minus 4, x minus We already talked about opposites in rational expressions. Dividing rational expressions. Minus three. Change flip. That's how you divide fractions. So that we have x minus three divided by x. Plus You multiply across. So our answer is x minus 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 1 times x plus 5. And can we cancel anything out? Nope. 